Hey everybody, it's Andy here, AK Montoya, and we are back for round two of Vintage League playing Bant today. We have run into a Holovine player according to MTG Goldfish, and unfortunately we've lost the die roll here. This would be a very different game if we were on the play. I don't think Holovine can beat a turn one of yet, but as it stands, we're probably going to fall significantly behind here. Uh, I mean, I guess it's contingent on how powerful my, my opponent's opener is, but uh, Bant deck is not built in the opening game to be able to combat multiple Hollow One slash Van Divines. So they found it bizarre. But hopefully we're able to resolve Lavinia, and they don't do too much uh, to us here. Like if it's a couple root walls, we're in good shape. Well, potentially. Oh, it's Hogak Vine. Ooh, that's nasty. I think I have to force that. Because this is Hogak Vine, I feel like resolving Lavinia here is just really decent. Now, Hogak Vine does have ways around Lavinia. Yeah, I mean, sure, they want to force it bigger. That's fine. It's not ideal because we get Wasteland, we, we could be in some trouble, but... Hollow One is not longer a worry. Hogak is no longer a worry. And those are the big offenders. But they can grind you out. They can cast Deathrite Shamans, and they can hard cast uh, uh, Blood Ghasts, etc. So this is what I was just talking about. Like, that's pretty good. So we're kind of looking for a green source here. They cannot block. So we're in a holding pattern here. Let's see what they've got. Like a second bazaar could be problematic for me. Okay. Good draw. I think we'll get a green source here. We're going to hard cast the. And the extra damage does help the race here. Like nobody's playing Lavinia in the metagame. Lavinia is just so good. Like PO is everywhere. Yep. So we're racing. We will win this race as it currently stands. Now, Death Ray Shaman compounds things if they have that, but. Let's see if we can find a land here, guys. We did not find a land. Oh boy. All right. I don't think there's any need for us to attack the graveyard right at the moment. Yuck, they found a second bayou. You know, they're dead next turn. It's upon a time. I'm not going to let that happen. Okay. Lavinia, ladies, gentlemen, very good. On the draw against Hogak, fine. I have to feel good about that. Traps, definitely decent against Hogak, Containment Priest. I do typically like Swords to Plowshares in these type of matchups. Not sure how really how good they are, but... 
So we are going to have some difficulty navigating what's important in our deck here. I guess Force of Vigor is not as relevant. I don't think we can keep Collector Roofs. I don't think we can keep Sylvan Library. I don't mind Flusterstorm because they are on Force of Vigors. I think Force of Negation is typically poor. I could see a world where we don't need three Okos. Okos is slow on the draw. For those of you who are wondering why is this player not playing Narset, this deck does not have a high density of spells in it. It's around 20. And I, I, despite I think Narset is a very good card, that's not really what our deck is trying to do. Caracas is good against Hogak. I think that's fine. Yeah, I definitely want all swords in this matchup. I think Ataxian Probe is a luxury. Cage is good against Hogak Vine. Pithing Needle is not as good, but it's still reasonable. What I mean by that is like against Hollow Vine, Pithing Needle will shut off their only source of uh, recursion, which is the Bazaar, but in Hogak Vine... They have uh, uh, mana-producing lands that can circumvent uh, your plan of trying to shut them down. So I think this is a good spot to be. Let's try this out. Our green count is not very high for Endurance of note, but we, we can cast Endurance in this deck, so it, it's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, this hand is pretty bad, but I think I'm going to keep it. Like, if they have an explosive hand, we have Tabernacle to hopefully tie them down a little bit. Uh, we have Wasteland for a Bazaar, if necessary. I mean, Hokak Vine certainly could beat a hand like this, but let's see. Okay. So hopefully we fade any mocks in here. Double vine, yeah. It's pretty good. Okay, I like swords. I think we're going to wasteland them here, guys. They, they may have another bazaar, but I still think it's worth doing. Um, do I want to play a mox out? They do run chalice. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to expose it, though. Okay. Hopefully they don't get their vines going this turn. Root Walla? Okay. Okay, that's good for us. There's Oko. Um, I don't think I need to expose the uh, tabernacle quite yet. We can play around. We can play with days. For now, we'll see. Okay, so that's the scary thing, right? Probably just going to hard cast. Uh, yeah. So I am just going. They've already played a land. I think I'll get a, a green source here. Actually, I might need to get a white source. I hate to admit it. Because if I have to tabernac tabernacle next turn, I, I may not be able to... I may not be able to... Swords. I'm just going to daze them here while I have an opportunity to do so. Now, they could get these vines back in an Oko, which is pretty scary, but... I think it's time to get Oko going here. I mean, I think there's a pretty reasonable chance that they actually just get all their stuff going here. 
but I, I, I think we just got to do it. Like, I mean, this is the kind of hand we have, right? Just have to hope they can't get off, go off here. Having the Bayou does increase their chances of that significantly. Oh, they hit the root wall. I was just going to say, if they don't hit the root wall here, we might be all right. But I think there's a very good chance we uh, are getting hammered here. Hopefully not. Just Gak coming in. Yep, here we go. I guess that was a reason. I guess that was a reason to counter the root wall of there with my force. That was an error on my part. So we're we're getting hit really hard here. Hopefully they send two vines at uh, Hogak. No, they're or at, they're just ignoring Oko. Follow one. Okay. So we should be okay here. We do need to find something to clean up that graveyard of theirs. Yeah, we're going to make our guy here. So we will make them pay for their Hogak. They're going to lose their board here with the exception of the Hogak, and we will STP the Hogak. We just need our deck to to do what it does for us. We're still we we are still in peril of them being able to bring the Benjamins back, so we're going to have to pad our uh, board here pretty good. I will do this in their upkeep so they don't draw an STP. I guess it doesn't matter because I have Fluster Storm. Yep. Phew. Let me just take their bazaar here. Now they've conceded. Okay. Another good match win. We beat Hogak fine there. Lavinia looked like an absolute superstar in game one on the draw. And post board, Tabernacle obviously looking really strong. I think we made a, a slight misstep. Uh, well, not a slight misstep. It was a misstep not countering that basking root walla to ensure that they didn't get Hogak into, or to lower the likelihood they didn't get Hogak into play. Um, because, of course, having the two creatures in play was just an easy line for them to bring Hogak, Hogak back and animate the Benjamins. Now, that said, they did have a Bayou that was open. And with one card in hand after a Bazaar, uh, as I mentioned, there was a pretty high prevalence they were going to find something like a Stitcher Supplier or a Deathrite Shaman to be able to bring the Vines back anyways in Hogak. But I think we needed to play to our outs in that particular situation. We opened ourselves up to potentially losing that game as a result of that. But all that said, we got there. I mean, our deck did what we needed it to do and uh, looked pretty good. So remember, hit that like and subscribe button, guys. We'll see you for round three.